Hi, I'm Jennifer from Shabby Fabrics. Today I'm going to show you how to make this caddy organizer. There's so many times where I need all of my things in one location and this is perfect. It's great for over a stroller, so maybe when you're shopping you need to have your keys, your phone, um, my gosh, your wallet, all in one location. This is great to go over a stroller or maybe for someone that uses a walker and again, that gets their hands free so they can be hanging on the walker and then everything they need is there. Um, if you don't put the ribbons on the side, I'll show you what this looks like with the ribbons. You could even put this over the arm of a couch. Maybe make one side shorter so that the, the remote control, your newspaper, um, and it looks great in a variety of colors. We've done one for the guys. We even monogram that. So um, lots of possibilities. The collection we're using today is Garden Time from Maywood Studios. Love their fabric. Um, and I want to show you how easy this is. It's going to go together in absolutely no time. So you have a front fabric, you have a back fabric. We'll be using fusible fleece today and a binding fabric. So the first thing that you'll want to do is you will, let's put the binding aside. Of course, that's going to come later. Let's get that front fabric going. The measurements for this will all be on the website. So don't worry about scrambling and writing those down right now. Go to the website, shabbyfabrics.com on the bottom, at the very, very bottom, this says free downloads, just click that. You'll be looking for the caddy organizer and we'll have all the measurements there. But just so, so you know what they are, you'll be cutting the main fabric, that's the front here, this fabric here, and then we have the back. Those two fabrics, 14 and a half by 25, and you'll be cutting your fusible fleece. You need just one piece for that to the same measurement. doesn't really matter which of those two fabrics that you um, iron this to. Now a fusible fleece is fusible on one side. So it's very easy on the one side, and I'll show you what we do with that. I'll just, I'll just pick the dark purple. You'll just lay that out on your pressing mat or ironing board. Lay your fusible fleece on the top. Line them up as best as you can. Iron them together as you would suspect. A medium heat. I have found that fusible fleece tends to shrink a little bit. Don't worry too much about that because we are going to be cutting this measurement down shortly once everything is all quilted together, but I'll get, I'll get you to that step. So you would just place this on here, iron this down. Now on the other side that is not have a fusible um, aspect to it, we like to use the Quilters Basting Spray. This is from June Taylor. Just now, if you're going to use this, do this in a well-ventilated area. Cover your workspace because any overspray is definitely sticky. I've definitely um, done that and it just kind of sticks to everything. So it does make a mess, but I, I do love the product because I want everything to be stuck together. So let's just pretend, let's just pretend we've sprayed this. And now we'll go ahead and put the other fabric on top. And just starting from the middle. I, I like to smooth those types of things out rather than working from the edge. I just like to start in the middle and work my way out. So let's just pretend that whole thing is together. Now we like to have ours quilted. I don't know if you can see the grid in there, um, but we wanted that to be quilted. Just grab your friction pen. I do recommend you draw on the lightest color fabric only because when I have removed the lines of the friction pen with heat. If it's a darker fabric, it tends to leave a little bit of a white, kind of almost a milky haze. But on the lighter fabrics, I don't see it. So I would just, there's nothing complete, there's nothing scientific about this. I'm just going to choose a nice diagonal and just start drawing. We did our interval about two and a half inches. Whatever you pick, stick with that when you draw the lines. Just go all the way this way, all the way this way, two and a half. Then turn and repeat again. Here, two and a half, two and a half, and just quilt that straight lines. Once that's done, you'll trim that down to 14 by 24 and a half. Again, don't worry about those measurements, they'll be on the website. Now, we went ahead and quilted that ahead of time. So, this is the main part of your um, caddy. So let me show you what that looks like. And that way you can see the quilted lines too. It just looks so professional. And it holds it all together. It gives it a lot more oomph. Now we can put that aside at this point because we can work on the pockets. 
So this is where you get to personalize your caddy for you. Um, I'll show you what I mean by that. Our caddy, I'll just bring it up here so you can see it. You can decide here you didn't want the pocket slit. Notice here we put this in three different sections. We didn't have to do that. We could have either just sewn right down the middle and had two, two pockets or not sewn at all and had another larger pocket. So you can decide how you want this. Again, this one's made in threes. This is just one large pocket. Let me show you the back side. We did, it, we did it differently. We did two pockets here and then a big pocket there. So you can decide what it is that you're wanting to put in there on a daily basis and then tailor that for your needs. Once you determine your pockets, then you'll know what to do next. Now notice we have a shorter pocket and we have a taller pocket. Let's start off with the shorter, short, shorter pocket. Uh, let's see, this is a seven inches by 14. You'll need the front and the back and the piece of fusible fleece again. Same story. Iron it to one piece. Uh, the basting spray, you'll spray. Um, put the next fabric on. You could quilt this. We didn't quilt this at this point. Um, and you can put that aside. You'll prepare the uh, other pocket the same way. But before we go into the bigger pocket, you want to put binding on the top of this. So using your binding fabric, we like to cut the binding strips to two and a half inches wide. It just seems to be, that's what you do in quilting. So anytime I bind something, even a DIY project, I just use the same measurement because I've proven that two and a half inch binding strips really work well for me. Um, take this to your pressing mat, go ahead and with the wrong sides together, give a nice good crease. Now this is 14 inches long, so just make sure that that binding strip is at least 14 inches. And you'll be using four of those because you have two pockets on this side and two pockets on the other. So you'll need four strips, two and a half inches wide by at least 14. You can even just cut 14 and a half so you have a little bit of breathing room. And you'll just press that in half just like this. Now we're gonna actually sew this one on. Keep in mind, this would have been all sewn together, right? Or not sewn together, but all basted together, ready to go. I could quilt it or not quilt it, my choice. But at this point, we'll take that. This is the raw edges now. And this is the rounded edge on this. And we'll just line that up. I like to pin, don't skip that step. That way you're assured that your binding strip is running right along your fabric. And we'll take this to we would take this to the machine at this point and just sew our quarter inch all the way down. And when I come back, we'll go the next step. Now that I've sewn my binding on, now I will just pivot this over that edge and around to the back. Now you can just pin or there's something new that I found I love. These are called Wonder Clips. These are the pink ones, so the breast cancer. What I love about that too is that a portion of the proceeds goes to benefit breast cancer research, which is always great. So I love, I love the Wonder Clips because first off, they're pink, <laughs> so I love that. But beyond that, when I pin stuff, sometimes when I take it to the sewing machine, I end up uh, kind of clipping myself, poking myself, and I like bleed a little bit. So this is great. You're not gonna hurt yourself on the Wonder Clips. Um, so you'll just clip them on. You'll use these just like you would pins. I, I don't know. I just think they're really cool. So this is something that you will use over and over again. So definitely, a, definitely a worthy investment. Now, choices here. I do most of my binding by hand, but that's also for a quilt. Here, you may be doing a large quantity of these. Maybe it's a, a, a charitable thing you're going to be doing for someone or, or a group of people. Maybe your quilting or sewing group will be making a lot of these and you just want to kind of get it done. So we're going to go ahead and go to the machine and we will do this by machine. So um, of course, if you just really don't want to do that, just sew that binding down by hand like you always have. Or let's get this to the sewing machine. My plan at this point is to stitch in the ditch. It's called stitching in the ditch. I'm going to pull the fabric away and I'm just going to stitch right down through and that little slot there, and that'll catch the fabric on the back. 
When I come back, it'll be all sewn down and we'll move on to the next step. I sewed that binding down by machine. Now this part that's kind of has a little flap, I'll have that in the back. This will be in the front. Um, just go ahead and tidy up the ends. Of course, the binding strip will be a little bit longer. Um, and we'll just clean that up. And this is when you decide, do you want to have um, in smaller pockets? And I, I do, I like this arrangement where I have three, three little pockets in the front and then a the bigger thing in the back for books. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be doing that. So what that means is I need those three sections and that's why you'll just measure what you have and I believe that was 14 inches. So, and you know, you can even decide, well, I like two smaller pockets here and maybe a wider pocket. This is your project. You can decide exactly how you want that to be. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna come in four inches. Let's just go four inches. And let's go four and a half. And we can just mark a line there. We'll just mark a line. And we'll come in four and a half inches from the other side and mark a line. And at this point, we will just take that to our machine and just straight stitch this. Now the back pocket here, you would lay this on top, this is the smaller pocket, and you sew these together. In fact, let's do that. That way when we put our, ca our caddy together, you're gonna to see exactly what it's gonna look like. So depending on how you have your pockets arranged will depend on what gets sewn together first. This is the arrangement I like. So these two need to be sewn and I'm gonna start here and work my way down. So I'm gonna do that and when I come back, we'll go to the next step. Now that I've sewn those lines, I'm gonna make them disappear. Always my favorite disappearing act with the hot iron, the friction pen just disappears away. Not necessary, if, especially if you've, if you've sewn right over those lines, but I like to do it. I don't want that to be there, so that's gone. Now, that's if you want your pockets to look like this, but I wanna show you the other side of the caddy because you might prefer that arrangement instead. So let's look at the other side here. That's where the front pocket is open and then the back pockets are split in half. If that's the arrangement that you like, then in that instance, you will take your quilted piece like this. You've got your larger pocket, okay? And you would find your center point, easy enough to do. Or you can just measure, if this is 14 inches wide, so the midpoint is seven. Um, and we can just draw that line I'll just kind of get a visual where that is, right there. Draw that line. Now what you'll do is you'll actually pin this together and you'll sew this pocket to the main piece. Okay, let's just do that. And I can do that part off camera. But let's just say that I sew that together. Now I've got two individual pockets. The other pocket comes on top. There's gonna to be a lot of fabric coming together right now. And you'll pin that. And then on the other end, that will be like this. And again, everything stacked real nice and snug on top of, it, on top of itself. Now that everything is stacked, a couple of choices here. You can run a basting stitch, maybe an eighth of an inch, all the way around the perimeter of this and just hold this all together before you put the binding strips on, or you can go ahead and put the binding strips on top of that. that again, that's a, this is a lot of fabric you're going through. It's a lot of things to just keep uh, track of that they don't shift and you don't miss that in the binding. Now, if you do go ahead and just go right into that binding step, you feel confident that you can pin well, nothing's gonna move. If you, if you do decide that you want the caddy to be secured on the sides, like we've done here, maybe you're going over, again, a walker or a stroller, um, you're going to want to attach some ribbon. And you can decide on that placement of that ribbon. We did that 
you know, down from the top of that pocket by a couple inches, maybe about right here. We cut four 20 inch lengths of that. We actually secured this to the back of it. So that way um, it's coming across this way rather than wrapping across the binding. So I have single face, satin ribbon, shiny side will be out. And where it hit is about in this cream area, about halfway there. So if you can visualize that on the back side, I'll just turn it over so you can see it. I'm just gonna pin it in place right there. I'm just gonna keep that in place. Now I know that it's gonna be very e easy for this to get tangled up while I'm sewing the binding on. So I'm just gonna kind of gather it up and maybe pin it out of the way so I don't inadvertently um, have part of that coming into the binding where I didn't intend for it to be. So you'll repeat that for all four um, locations for your ribbon, pin those in place, get the tail out of the way, and then we're going to be sewing on the binding. Two and a half inch strips, you'll need about 80 inches, so slice those strips together. You'll press that in half, wrong sides together, and then to get started with the binding, you may already have your favorite binding technique. If you don't have a favorite binding technique, this is one that's worked for me. Go ahead and open up that the beginning of that binding and fold part of that down till you have a 90 degree corner and just do a nice press right there. And then I'm going to fold that over. This is how you'll be able to, you'll start, you know, you can basically start anywhere. I might start here. I don't think there's any reason there's any one area more significant than the other to begin. Some projects there's an important area to begin and this doesn't seem to have any apparent relevance to where I began and um, began the binding. But you'll go all the way around and then the tail will kind of nest in here for that reason. Actually, I'm gonna start the binding out here. I wanna start it where there's at least the least amount of bulk because there will be bulk for sure where the binding begins and ends. I'm going to leave the first four to five inches open because when we come around at the end, we'll be nesting the tail in there. And I'm just gonna pin this in place. And I'm gonna to continue to pin. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna sew a certain amount of this binding on camera with you because I want to show you how to do binding in the corners. This is how to do a mitered corner with binding. It's the coolest thing. It looks professional um, and it's really simple to do, but it, gosh, it's a lot easier to see someone do it than to try to read it. I've read this and read this, and when someone showed it to me, I'm like, ah, I get that, so much easier. So I'm gonna get started with the binding. I'm gonna get everything pinned down pretty well. Then when I get to this corner, uh, when I'm about a quarter of an inch away, I'm gonna stop, back up and reinforce, and I'm gonna stop, and then I'm gonna show you how to make that pivot, that 90 degree, curve or corner and go come down this direction and again a 90 degree turn and go back up this direction. So let me get it all pinned together and then I'll start sewing. I'm going to stop a quarter inch from the end and then I'll show you how to make that pivot. So I'm getting near my corner. One thing you can do um, if you're inclined to, you can always mark that. Now I tend to find my binding kind of creeps along meaning I pinned it, but it just seems like it just kind of pushes along. I'm getting close enough now though that I feel comfortable that I can mark that quarter inch away and I'm gonna stop right there. It just gives me the visual so I don't go beyond that. I'm cutting into it now. Now I'm gonna back up. So I'm just coming up to it but not going beyond. Okay, now you will actually take your project out, trim your threads. This is the part I want to show you. Let me move this out of the way. I like to actually turn the project, as you can see, 90 degrees. So that I'm only, see that ribbon's already getting in the way. Let me put that again out of the way. And pin it one more time. Just out of our way. All right, so, so I've come here now. Go and 
go until you see you see this line here I don't want the binding strip here I don't want it here it should be a continuous line that flows from the project into the binding when you have that you'll know you're at a 45 degree angle then watch how I just pivot back on top of itself and now I'm going back in the other direction just how you stopped a quarter inch away from the end you will begin a quarter inch away again from this side so I'm not going to start sewing here but I'll start sewing about right there now before I do that I'm definitely going to either use my clips or my pins and make sure that everything is secure so when I start going back down this direction so this is not a quick process but it gives such a professional finish you'll be really pleased that you spent the time to do this um, all right so I'm going to take this to the machine right now and we're going to start sewing down that side and that's really all there is to do to doing a nice mitered corner binding it's not hard it's just a little time consuming so let's go ahead we're going to start right where that dot is just like before we'll begin and go back and reinforce that area and now we'll be coming down here so i will continue going around the corners mitering at each corner and when i come around this last side i'm going to show you how to nest that binding strip right inside there and we'll finish up the project I'm coming down the fourth side now and this is where I wanted to pick this back up now I've got a lot of extra binding strips so I don't think we needed nearly this much but why don't we go ahead I'm gonna you can see this you can see the opening here I want to nest oh gosh a good inch inch and a half inside there so I'm going to trim that. You can always trim it again. I'd rather trim it long than short. Now this is where I'm going to open this up. Make sure this is nice and smooth. And that the, this piece is nice and smooth. Here we go. Ribbon's getting caught. I'm going to trim that a little bit long. Let me go trim that just a little bit less. See how that's just going to nest right in there? Okay. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go back. Let's trim that and we're going to go back now that that's nested and I'm just going to stitch over that and I can do that off camera. Don't have to do that. I'll just pin that for now knowing I'm going to come back. What I want to show you here is you have the option now of sewing it down, wrapping it around and sewing it down by machine or by hand. This is where the wonder clips come in really handy again. And I'll show you how to do one of these corners. I'll just start real, real quick right, right in here. We're just going to wrap that around the edge and we'll put in a clip like that. Wrap it around. I like to look at the back side of the project so I can see that I've, I'm completely covering this whole area and I have a nice straight line. So I come like this. What I do here is I just make again a 45 or, or 45 degrees and then I pivot it kind of back over my thumb and I'll put a clip there. See how nice and mitered and tidy that is. I love how it looks in the corners and you'll just continue. Now with needle and thread, I like to do binding by hand, especially when it's going to be seen. I have two, um, actually I have a long strand of thread that I've looped back around so I have, it's long, and I brought both raw edges up here. So now I have a loop here. Why I like that, 
so well is I can come up underneath to begin. I'm just going to loop through that. I'm just going to go right through that little loop and I've secured my threads. I don't have a knot or anything showing. Now I would of course be using a green. I'm only using a white so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to come up underneath and grab just a little bit of that binding. Now I will go, I'm not going to go all the way to the front. I'm kind of, I'm just running my stitches in between the back and the front and kind of in that meaty uh, area that has all that fusible um, fleece. So I'm going to run right down there, probably I don't know, a quarter of an inch maybe. I probably take longer stitches than I should because I just want to get it done and move on to my next project. Let me move that clip out of the way. I want, I want you to see that again. Get that. Oh, my needle came undone. But you get the gist of it. It's just, and even with a white thread, you can still barely see it. And you can imagine when you have a coordinating thread, you really don't see it at all. Just continue all the way around. When you get uh, threads run too short, just uh, tie it off. Start again, kind of underneath there, and just continue all the way around. So that's all there is to making an organizer caddy from Shabby Fabrics.